Welcome to The Art of Show, where we feature the people who are creating amazing stories for kids. Join us as we chat with children's book illustrators and authors, storyboardists, animators, and more. Now, their art might be for kids, but aren't we all just kids at heart? Here's your host, Brandon. All right, welcome back to The Art of Show. This is episode number six. We're excited to have Jen Illy hanging out with us today. Uh, Jen is an amazing artist, and uh, she actually does something a little bit different than the folks that we've had on the show so far. Uh, And we're gonna get into her bio here in just one second. Uh, But before we do, one of the things I like to do uh, with all of you guys is give you a little update um, just on my end and things that are going on. Um, As you might know, uh, I am trying to put out kids' books, and I love to kind of bring you guys along with the process. And so one of the ways that I'm doing that um, is kind of sharing that process with you guys during these quick intros on the podcast. So if you don't want to hear that, go ahead and skip a couple minutes and we'll get into the interview with Jen because it's amazing. Uh, But if not, you guys know that I'm working on a new book. It's about a boy that is lost in space. Uh, It actually might be called Lost in Space. In fact, here is a cover that I uh, put together recently. Uh, first couple pages are through, having a blast doing it. But the big thing is, is I love to have you guys help me decide what happens next in the story. And you guys can do that if you go to brandoncullum.com forward slash space, and uh, you can join the team. Uh, and you're actually gonna be talking to the boy in space. And so it's like you guys are on a mission control back home telling him what to do. So it's a lot of fun, I enjoy doing it, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. You also get a free copy of the book before it comes out. So be sure and check that out, brandoncullum.com forward slash spaced. But let's dive into probably the main reason that you're here. That is to listen to Jen Ely. Uh, you might not have heard of Jen, but you've probably seen some of her work, especially if you're a fan of Leica. Uh, Leica is the stop motion animation company who has done amazing work like Coraline, as well as um, Paranorman and the Box Trolls, and recently Kubo, who came, which came out actually a couple months ago, or maybe a month ago. Um, and it was amazing, but uh, they do uh, actual stop motion with the characters. It's pretty unreal what they do. They're up in Portland, Oregon, um, and doing some amazing stuff. But Jen did some visual development for Box Trolls, and so I'm included some of her images uh, in the show notes, which if you guys are just watching this on YouTube, you can check the show notes out at brandoncullum.com forward slash six like episode six, so the number six, and it's a Cullum, C-U-L-L-U-M-M like man, but uh, she does visual development, so she helps establish the look and the feel of the book. She's worked on movies like Puss in Boots, uh, as well as uh, some really cool stuff in VR. If you guys have ever heard of the spotlight stories that Google does, um, basically it's this really cool story. I'll, I'll link it to the bottom. You you hold it up to your phone and then your phone is almost like a portal into the world. So you're literally looking around and you're seeing whatever that would see, uh, whatever your phone screen would see. So a really cool way to kind of step into virtual reality, totally free, but she worked on one called On Ice um, with uh, Shane and Tyndall, who is the, um, the artist behind Kubo. Uh, really cool stuff there. You want to check it out. And uh, it's, just, it's really cool to hear how she has to f- think through art development when your light source is changing. Uh, that was really interesting. She had to think through. Um, and she did some other cool stuff with Amazon um, as well as Warner Brothers. So kind of all over the place. And she's making some amazing art along the way. Her style is awesome. Definitely check her out. Uh, all of those links are in the show notes. And uh, without further ado, let's check out our interview with Jen. Uh, I would love to kind of hear how art entered your story. Was it something your parents did or did you start doing it or kind of how, how did that, how'd you get going in it? Yeah. Um, you know, nobody in my immediate family, uh, is an artist, but I had an uncle who was, and he actually was a billboard painter back when they actually like would in the warehouses, like, uh, that's cool. and he was an incredible and he would paint on his own too. But, um, you know, my mom always had a lot of respect for him and um, would really indulge me when I would get into art stuff as a kid. But um, I didn't have a lot of examples for it. and I didn't really know it was a job that you could have. <laughs> so I didn't take it seriously in that way for a long time. Um, sorry, my dog's coughing. Over no, there. you're fine. Um, so I didn't I didn't take it seriously for a long time. And I, I actually played sports in high school. So I was like, I'm gonna go to college for basketball. <laughs> and then kind of did a did a turn on that once I, I met a couple painters and, and started seeing that like, oh, some people make a living this way. 
Like, I feel like when you grow up in the Midwest in particular, it's like, I didn't know anybody making movies or working in animation and any of that kind of stuff. Like, we're, my we're, grandparents actually worked in the parks, like, okay. in the Disney park okay, gotcha. in Orlando. Yeah. But they worked in, like, the shops. Uh, okay. So it's like, we'd go to Disney World a lot, but I never put together, like, all these movies and all these things that I love. Like, there are people, like, coming up with that stuff. Like, it didn't feel accessible. I never connected those dots until very late in life, actually. Yeah. Um, so I went to school for art, but I was painting and drawing at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to learn how to do it. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I was kind of freaked out by the whole thing. Uh, I did some gallery painting after that, but it just didn't feel right. Like, I really like working with other people and being mm -hmm. collaborative. I think as an artist, you're one of two ways, right? Like, either you have your thing, it's very self-contained and self-driven, and like, you have something to say to the world on your own, mm -hmm. or you're somebody who likes to bounce off of other people and be a collaborative person and like work with art directors, that kind of thing. And I've always been more the collaborative person. Mm. Um, I really love other people's input on my art. I think it makes it stronger. So for me, animation is this perfect thing that I didn't find till I was about 29 when I was in grad school oh, wow. um, for illustration is why I went back, but that turned into visual development. Um, just that aspect of that collaborative nature is what drew me to it. And that's kind of how I ended up there. And I, um, coming out of grad school, got an internship with Leica in 2012. And since then have been doing nothing but animation pretty much. That's awesome. So yeah. were, have you kind of been freelancing this whole period while you're in college no. and, and out? No, I, I, so immediately following grad school, I came, um, to Portland for, uh, to internship with Leica, which was on the box trolls, okay. which is, a uh, wonderful film that yeah. I really had a good time working on. It was my first project, so I was pretty excited. Um, so I was an art intern for a while, and then I they didn't really have um, a good spot to put me, so they made me a PA. So it's like I would do assistant things, but then I would also learn and get to make art for the film and mm. that kind of stuff too. So I was kind of all over. And then after that film ended, um, I rolled off of that, and then about a, a couple months later, ended up um, going up to Vancouver to work on the Adventures of Puss in Boots mm. for DreamWorks as their color stylist. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, that was from the beginning of that project. Um, and just the color stylists on a show like that, like I, they would give me the set, sometimes props, but mostly sets. And I would determine the paint style and the color and textures and things for that. Um, and then also they would do these little 2D animations and I would do a lot of design for those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I did that for about eight or nine months and then um, came back down here. And that's when I started freelancing. But I kind of didn't like make the decision I'm going to freelance now. It was kind of just like, well, I want to go back to Portland and then I'm with, I'll, maybe I'll look for things or see what I want to do. And then I just started getting picked up for commercial jobs and then getting bounced over to, to like every once in a while and that kind of thing. So now I kind of do a lot of different little things. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's been about the last two years, I guess okay. I've been freelancing. Very cool. What, yeah. what was it initially that drew you to art? Was it the visual side of it? You know, that's hard to say. I guess um, I was always a kid who liked to be alone. Like I like to, uh, I like to read yeah. or I like to do things where you can really zone into that thing. And, you know, I think I just kind of fell in love with the problem solving aspect mm. of it. Um, I think that's why I like illustration or the collaborative kind of thing. Cause I, I've always had an urge to tell stories. I love stories. Mm -hmm. I love movies. I love books. I love those kinds of things. But I never saw myself as a writer or somebody who wanted to look at it that way. Like, I'm really interested in color. Mm. I'm really interested in lighting, that kind of thing. So that's my way of kind of telling stories or translating stories. And um, I like to think that in in taking a piece of writing and then trying to show that visually, like, I get to add something to that mm. story. I get to, you know, clarify parts of it that I think are important or, you know. Um, enhance it in some way for for the audience. So I think that's what I love about it is just, you know, you've, you've got this specific goal in mind and how to get there successfully and surprise yourself making something beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's what gets me excited about it in the morning. Yeah. So what uh, so when you started with like, how, how did that kind of that come about you said that was an internship that you guys yeah so uh when i was in grad school i realized that i wanted to do visual development after taking uh i took an elective course in this course actually okay and they did um, visual development but it was meant to be for comics okay. because it was sequential art and that was my first time coming in contact with the idea of visual development did you go to scad did i see that um, yeah well okay. for grad school i went to scad yeah okay was that in atlanta yeah 
That was in Savannah. In Savannah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I am in like Athens, Georgia. So we, oh, we nice. hear SCAD all the time. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a big place. I feel like it's it a little bigger every year. But, yeah, yeah. Um, they have they have a great uh, sequential art department. One of the few schools in America that has a, a grad department for mm-hmm. sequential artists. So that's very cool. Um, but it was neat because it was like I always loved to make art, even when I was fine art painting. My version of fine art painting still was telling stories. Like I would take a story from mythology or something like that, and um, in, infuse like different meanings and things into it so it was always based on story it was always based on narrative i just didn't realize what i was doing yeah. i didn't realize visual development was a thing or was a job or any of that so once i thought about that of like okay you've got this story now what does that look like what do the characters look like what do the sets look like what is the world about visually um that just really kind of lit my fire you know um and and after learning about that um i started investigating places that i would want to do it and uh, gaming seems like a lot of it is more realistic, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I was really inspired by animation and the exploration of color and how pushed and stylized things could be. So animation was the automatic choice for me. I was obsessed with Coraline mm. from the moment that I saw trailers yeah. for it. I was just in love. Um, you know, I think it was, there was this one detail on their website about how like the trees, it was painted pink popcorn for like uh-huh. the leaves and stuff. And something about that just like blew my mind. So I started just like ingesting all of this uh, info about them and they were coming to visit like it. So okay. I got really excited and they had set up interviews, but they hadn't set up one with me because um, I was in the illustration department. And that's not who they were asking to see. But I got so excited that I like built them this box and this portfolio and like sewed buttons to the top of it that's and cool. like all this stuff. Yeah, so they let me go see her, even though she wasn't scheduled to see me. So she's like trying to eat her lunch, and I'm like shoving this box in her face. <laughs> it's like, I love you guys, like please. And I think that she just saw how excited I was, and um, they ended up choosing me for their internship, which is a huge honor because a lot of people uh, apply for that. And that was kind of it from there. Like I, I fell into that place, and um, they do such beautiful work. I mean, it was amazing. What was it like? So you mentioned you love collaborative work. And I imagine you, you probably had some collaborative stuff while you're yeah. in college and grad school. But what was it like kind of walking into a full out like production environment? It seems like it would, that would be almost like the Mecca of like collaboration. What was that kind of like walking into it? Yeah, well, it was kind of crazy because when I got there, they had been working on this for a little while. So it was like you come in and everybody's so busy mm-hmm. and it's like they're excited and they're really nice. But you're also like they're trying to get a thousand yeah. things done. Like there's never enough time in a day in a production. So one, you walk in and like seeing all the sets and everything for the first time is so overwhelming that you're just like super fangirl geek out. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I was not in professional mode. I was in like uh, kind of like <laughs> nerd excitement mode. Um, but the art director was kind enough. She he brought us to the stages and he was like, you know, you can get on top of that set, right? That's it's cool. like the street, the main street from Paranorman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we got to like Godzilla on that thing. Oh, that's just, cool. Like, standing on the set. It was yeah. the craziest. Yeah. Craziest first day ever. But. Soon you realize that like, while they're excited that you're there, their main job is this other stuff and you don't really know the speed yet. So you, it's hard to jump in. So what I started doing, um, the way that I integrated myself was just to hang back, listen and see what they needed. And then anything that somebody didn't like raise their hand and take like in a meeting to be like, oh, we need to know when the truck appears and what sides of it we see. So I would then go and I would do that like in my side time. And then I would like leave it on people's desks. Like, here's that thing you guys talked about needing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's how I, I kind of made a place for myself more permanently is just filling in the gaps. Cause there are always things that kind of fall under the radar that they need, but there's nobody who's officially assigned to it. Right. And like, so I, I sort of integrated myself that way. And as I did that, people became more aware of me. Number one, I became like useful Um, but also because I was useful, they wanted to be useful to me. So started asking me what my goals were and integrating more, me more into the art side of things as well. So that's very cool. Um, it worked out pretty great. (laughs) Yeah. So what was, what was some of your role? We said it was on box trolls. Was that when that, that period. Mm -hmm. So for those that may not know, when you talk about visual development and designing sets and lighting, what does that kind of look like on like a day to day? Like what's that process? Um, It's different for different parts of the production. Like, so on box trolls, because I wasn't officially an artist, um, I would do a lot of things in my side time, but I ended up doing by the end of it, some, um, I would call it look development and also, uh, like color key kind of stuff. 
So basically, um, you've got the animatic, which is the storyboards in motion kind of thing. And once you have that, you're, you're starting to figure out the color and the lighting, um, which goes out to everybody. It's like from the people painting the props to the people lighting the stages, all of that, they all need to be on the same page so Mm -hmm. that we, we know where we're headed visually. That's basically what that, what that's doing. Um, so in addition to doing some props and those kinds of things, I also did some, um, color and, and look development stuff for the opening scene. So the opening scene had a little bit of, it was like a flashback in the very beginning. I don't know if you remember the movie, Mm -hmm. but it was very graphic. It was a very different style than the rest of the movie because of that time jump. Mm -hmm. Um, so we needed to know what that looked like, how it was different than the rest of the film. And we also needed to know how to make that graphic leap in, in the style of like Mike Mignola or somebody like that, that uses like heavy blacks, Mm -hmm. almost like it was inked or something, um, with integrated into the style of the film that we had already established. Right. So at that point, because the style was already so established, I'm taking the style that was established by Michelle Breton, who was the original like concept artist for the film. And then finding a way to go, okay, now we're going to take that style and make it more graphic. So that was the problem of that moment. And I, I solved that problem um, with a few paintings and then those were sent out. But that's very different than when you come on in the beginning. So I worked recently with Laika on the film coming up after Kubo. Okay. And it was at the very beginning of the production. So that's very different. You haven't nailed down the style yet. You've got a lot of references and what you're doing is basically kind of honing in on it over time. Um, so the things that I was doing were more environment, um, designs, environment sketches, all the while trying to kind of pinpoint the style since it hadn't been established yet. Mm -hmm. So each week it's like, maybe on Monday I would, um, work sketches on a particular environment. It's like, oh, we've got this, you know, uh, I'm going to say a cave. This has nothing to do with what that project is, but whatever it happens to Uh be, it's, you know, it's the friend, the the fairy princess castle or, you know, whatever, whatever that is. I do sketches, you know, a pile of them on that first day. I run them by the production designer. He takes a look at them. Um, He may or may not show the director at that point. Picks one or two of them. I start developing those more, maybe doing value studies, that kind of thing. Uh, We find one that's starting to feel good. And then I would move into color. And then by the end of the week, we tried to do within a week, but it it really varies. But um, you're just throwing things at the wall, you know. So you're just trying different stuff. And at that point, um, the individual props and things aren't as big of a deal. It's more about capturing a feeling, capturing a, a, a mood and um, stylistically what the world feels like. Um, so you'll find that it's kind of like a blurry watercolor at first, mm. and then it gets more and more and more and more refined mm. as that process goes on. So once the film is in development, and I guess they're actually shooting, is there still kind of look development going along? Like, is, is that work still going or is it? There can be. That work is still going. So the thing about animation too is that, uh, well, I guess film in general, is that oftentimes the thing is still changing, still evolving. The script might change or the animate animatic might totally change. Like um, you're always having to go back and check it again because they, they're tweaking it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like you're fishing for the style with all those visuals and they're fishing for what the actual story is and how to edit. Like mm-hmm. even down to the end, when you're done shooting everything, they're still editing. Right. Mm-hmm. So they're always making those tweaks. Um, and dis- different visual development problems will come up within the tweaking of that story. Um, you know, things like, uh, like the box drill, mm-hmm. um, for, for box trolls. It's like, they had never done a puppet at that scale and any of that. So it's like, there are all these problems they're still trying to figure out and like, how they're going to use in stop motion when that big cheese ball kind of explodes at the end. So you're doing paintings like that while trying to figure that stuff out. Okay. Um, It's just a lot of little problems, you know, and those problems change, but you are doing it throughout. That's real cool. Uh, Yeah. Box trolls is one of my favorites. I love the, like like you said that like opening sequence, just, I mean, the overall look of it is it's so dark, but it's so rich too. It's just, I love it. It's, it's good. Um, yeah, I, um, that was, that was a fun one to work on. And it, um, it was great because, uh, when you are somebody who's trying to step into art, you don't want to take somebody else's assignment. Yeah. So with, with that one, it was great because they hadn't assigned it to anybody yet. Mm. And I was like, Hey, could I, I take a swing at that? And yeah. so that's always cool when you can get into those opportunities where it's like, you're not stepping on anybody's toes, but you can kind of show what you can do. Cause yeah. they really didn't have anything to lose. You know, it's like yeah. they could have just had one of the artists do it if I didn't do a good job. Yeah. So it all worked out. Now, uh, b- before we started recording, you mentioned you've kind of worked in a bunch of different industries and one that is kind of crazy, but also 
really cool. Have you, you've done some VR stuff. Have I seen that? So with like Google yeah. Spotlight and then I see, mm-hmm. I think you just posted something with Warner Brothers with like Tarzan. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, those are two kind of random jobs. So I met, um, Shannon Tindall. Okay. Who was the original creator of Kubo. Yeah. So he was there when I was working on box trolls. Um, but that they had kind of started that by the time I finished box trolls, but I met him, um, just through, uh, being there while he was doing things. And he's a super nice guy. I, I, I can't say enough good things about him, but, um, he was doing this little story called on ice. Mm-hmm. It's one of those Google spotlight stories. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, you've got your cell phone and like, you're watching the story, but you can like look anywhere, yeah, yeah. which is crazy. So it was him and um, Lou Romano did the production design who I'm like, I love him, you know, uh, for up and the Incredibles, mm-hmm. the color design, all that. Plus he was the voice of Linguini from Ratatouille. Was he really? Which, I didn't know that. He was. And, and it's so funny because I, you know, I'm up in Portland and they're down in San Francisco. So I would communicate with him by phone. So in my head, all I can see is like, <laughs> that is so amazing. Have you met him in person? Yeah. What's that? Have you I met- haven't actually met him in Good. person. So you can we just keep thinking he's, talking. he's a mouse. I can that. just yeah. keep thinking that yeah. he's like this horrible little chef with yeah. red hair. Yeah. Um, he's like the sweetest guy, but I just remember sitting in my car cause I'm like working something else and we're doing an intro meeting. I'm in my car. Like I'm talking to Lou Romano right now. <laughs> it was so cool, but, um, so I worked with him and I did like, um, paint design. Shannon did the characters himself. And he described it to me as, I think this is pretty accurate, as, um, think of it as like a bad second rate ice capade Star Wars show. Yeah. (laughs) With a bear. (laughs) And that's pretty true. There's like a bear on skates that is kind of like out there kind of wrecking the show and they're trying to keep it together. And like, it's just this over the top, super goofy, super fun, light, um, short, but uh, there's a lot in it. Like you can watch through it lots of different times and see different things going on going on you know um but it was crazy because with uh vr the lighting doesn't work the same Mm. it's not volumetric lighting so we don't know where you're going to be so we can't compose the lighting to the framing right okay so it's like we're trying to find an illustrative way to show things like the flocking on the bear's fur that kind of stuff yeah without pending on a light source because you don't know where somebody's looking or where things are going to be so it was just, it was kind of a cool thing. Like I'm really interested in seeing um, where things go in the future with, mm-hmm. with VR because it is, it is a particular um, kind of problem that's a little bit different than the standard animation um, world. So that was a very cool, a very cool thing. I th- think it turned out pretty great and I, I was really happy to get to work on it. Yeah, I saw it. I was because because I'd seen some of the spotlight stuff, but I hadn't seen that one or seen that it came out. Yeah. And I started watching. I'm like, is this Star Wars? I'm like, there's a bear. I'm like, what's going on? It's, right? it's really cool. So what? What's it it's like? Fun. It's super fun. Yeah. What's it like on the look development? Then is it the process still kind of the same? I mean, you mentioned the the lighting and the problems are different. It's a little different. Like a lot of times, it's who you're working with too. It's like you know, I'm up here and they were down there, and they would basically send me his character design. Sometimes it would be drawings. Sometimes it would be actual models that had already been done. Mm. And at first I was doing them digitally. And then I just realized it kind of wasn't having the feel that I wanted it to have. So I did these gouache paintings. Mm. So I sat in my attic for a couple weeks and did gouache paintings uh, on these little characters. Um, a little bit of costume design, but mostly texture and color stuff. Figuring out, like, how can we do a stylized metal? How can mm. we do, you know, these different things? Um, that was a very focused job. That was a very specific job. Um, whereas like when I'm doing the environment stuff, you've got to come up with the composition, you've got to come up with all the props and all the different stuff. And then you've got to paint it as well. This was just painting and texturing these, um, these models, these characters. And I don't mean texturing, texturing a model because I don't know how to texture things. Let's be clear, but (laughs) just figuring out what the textures would look like. That Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, So it it just really varies. They were very relaxed because they were still figuring out a lot of the technology stuff. So they weren't on a crazy deadline. Um, So it just depends. Like when I work on TV stuff, like that's a very different pace. Mm. Like they were kind of, they're usually behind before they start because by the time they get a green light, then they've got to staff up and all these things. So you're, you're running. Um, same thing with commercials. You're kind of like you're in a beginning because the deadlines are short and the turnaround is really you're kind of flooded. But um, they were very chilled out <laughs> and laid back on that one. That's really cool. So um, is it a similar type project then with Warner Brothers with uh, Tarzan? I saw you said interactive yeah. VR. Is that the same idea? Yeah, it was like to advertise the movie. They were doing these things and I don't know where they were setting them up, but it was like through VR 
there were three different little scenarios you could go through. One was he starts out on the plains and he sees the animals running and then the animals like run through the forest and you're running with them. Yeah. And then you kind of swing out on these vines and then um, all the way up to this cliff and you watch this beautiful sunrise. Um, So you get to have that experience. And then there was another one where it's like it's pouring rain and you encounter a gorilla who's a little bit hostile in the jungle. And he kind of you guys stand off a little bit and then he runs at you and like kind of I think he throws you to the ground. I can't recall. But like you're having these experiences through the VR. And then the last one, you actually are just swinging through the jungle with with um other apes which is pretty amazing as well but this was the very beginning of that process this was actually before the job had awarded Mm -hmm. so a lot of times the art is used to sell the product project Mm -hmm. like hey we should do this look how cool it would look kind of thing um so i was doing color and lighting design and, and really it's to show the mood it's like this is what it would feel like gotcha that's real cool um and those um yeah, and, and it went over really well. They they made the project, and I guess that it went really well. I think they're looking at doing some more of that kind of stuff. So that was really fun. Yeah, that's really cool. And uh, kind of the last one I wanted to hit, you, your projects are kind of all over the place, which are really <laughs> cool, super unique. So you were mentioning text, texting uh, projects with Amazon for kids to read. Is that right? But there's stories. Yeah. I know because they just yeah. launched that like a couple weeks ago. I feel, I feel like I saw those, that news. They just launched it. Uh, yeah, it's called Amazon Rapids. And Rapids, the idea okay. was like, okay, it's so hard to get kids to read now. There's so much technology, all these things. And so they get distracted and they're not really that interested in it. So this is an idea that they had, which is like, what if we took short stories? So maybe they're like seven to 900 words or something like very short. And they're all told through dialogues as if the characters are texting each other kind of thing. So messages pop up as you scroll through it. Mm -hmm. And you even see like the little dot, 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 like you would on a text or something. But it's cool because it's like you've got um, great little stories. They're all they're like really funny and surprising. And I, I have enjoyed reading them. But then you've got a bunch of different artists doing little character avatars because mm-hmm. like whoever's talking their little visual pops up and then you've got story um, images that pop up okay. so like something will happen and then as you click it like a, an image will pop up and like illustrate what happened right then and then there'll be like a background image so you get handed a story and you kind of get to like build a little world for that story which is really fun um, so that's been a really fun thing to work on yeah that's what you said those are you're having to turn those around every couple of weeks. Is that right? Yeah, I, I have one every week right one every now. Every week. Okay. Um, which it, it is, it is short turnaround, but it's, um, it's, it's a small amount of images. It's not a lot of images. They're very short stories, but it is very, you know, the turnaround is quick. Um, but it's a fun project. I mean, they're really open and they're really looking to see what you want to bring to it. You know, um, you get given the story and they kind of let you explore and try things. So it's, it's actually like a really fun part of my week. I do that in addition to like, I'm working on a commercial right now, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of doing like five things at once. But That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's nice to be able to switch it up though. Cause you don't really get like tired of one thing. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, you just, you're just moving around doing different things. That's cool. So what says you do work on so many things? It sounds like some are a little bit longer time scale. Some are within a week. What's your process like when you're having to go real quick versus when you got a little bit more time for the development. Oh, is, is there a difference or is it just kind of how much you put into it? There is a difference. There can be a really big difference. It really depends too on who you're working with. Um, so like with Amazon, I've been working with them for so long that I don't do a bunch of process stuff. Like I kind of just jump in and, and do it. And then if they have changes, I'll just make the changes to the final art. The same thing in commercial. Some of the time it's like um, if you're working with somebody that you know really well and they already have a strong idea of what they want. You can kind of just jump in. Like I'll be called in sometimes and it's like, I have four hours to do like a couple paintings mm. on a bid or something. So there's not a bunch of time for a bunch of preliminary work right. and sketches and all that. Like I'll just do some speed paints of like, okay, maybe it's this or even photo comping or whatever. Um, if the person doesn't know you as well, it's a lot harder to do that. The trust hasn't been built yet. Mm. Um, so then you're, you are locked, you know, you, you need to do some sketches. You need to give them some options, that kind of thing. Like you try to give options anyway, because I think that's just a positive thing to do um, to get to the best solution. But when time doesn't permit, time doesn't permit, you know. 
That's cool. Uh, well, as we're wrapping up, a couple questions we'd like to ask um, everybody we have on. Uh, the first one is, if you, you mentioned collaboration a lot. Is there someone yeah. you would, it's like your dream person to collaborate with? It might be a company or it might be a group of people, but if there was a project out there, you're like, this, this would be amazing. Oh, man. Um, there's, that's, there's so many answers to that question. So the first one <laughs> My favorite person to work with, and I've been lucky enough to actually get to work with him, is um, Nelson Lowry at Leica, hands down. I think he's absolutely brilliant, and I would follow him into the sun. Like, he's amazing. Um, so I feel very lucky that I've that I've gotten to, yeah. to do that work with him. Beyond that, um, I am a huge fan of Chris Applehans. I don't know that um, I'll ever really get to work with him, uh, but he is, I think that his work is so inspiring. He's somebody that I just, I love to look at his work and same with like Tatahiro, those people, they're all like old school, like a people as well, but I love them. And then I'm a huge nerd and I love like Westworld and Game of Thrones and that kind yes. of stuff too. So it would be rad to get to do something. Yeah. HBO, something HBO just calls yeah. you up and you're good to go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause that stuff is just so much fun. I love Westworld right now. Anyway. That's cool. Uh, I listened to tons of podcasts, obviously, I'm um, doing this one right now. And I was looking at the feed the other day, and I think like three were like Westworlds, like in the top 20. Like, I haven't watched it. Yeah. And so I'm like, this must be a really big deal right now. So it's, it, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I've, yeah. Heard, I've heard. I need to get HBO again to check it out. Uh, cool. Well, then the, the last question, well, two other questions I lied. Um, we do have lots of folks who do some stuff in the kid industry, whether it's kid movies. <laughs> um, and I'd love to know, did you have a book growing up, like a kid, a kid book that was your favorite or maybe your parents had to hide because you just kept wanting to find it? Man, uh, I don't know about books. I um, Or movies. Well, we, so we had, um, we were, we were extremely poor when I was a kid. Mm. And we didn't have a lot of things. So my grandparents worked at Disney World. So every Christmas, they would give us a Disney movie. So I wore those things into the ground, of course. But the other thing that we had were a couple of VHSs that we had recorded things from TV. Uh And so they're like all fuzzy because we watched them too much. But I must have watched Big Trouble in Little China and Star Wars until those tapes just died. Like I would just watch them over and over and over again. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I was, you know, I was a, I was a nerdy little kid. I love that. And I love horror movies. Mm. Um, I would watch like a Freddy Krueger marathon and then I'd be scared when I go to bed, but as a kid, (laughs) even I love that stuff. So that's cool. That's real cool. Well, um, if folks kind of want to keep up with what you're doing and all the, the, the projects you have and all the things you're juggling, uh, what's the best place for folks to do that? Um, I would say, you know, I've got a Twitter at Ely Jenna, and then I've got my website, which is just Jenny Um, Instagram under the same name as well. All of those places I tend to try and update things and put new work up whenever I can. So well, that's a good spot. Well, good stuff. Well, I appreciate your time. And like I said, your stuff is amazing. So I love seeing when you have new updates coming across. I'm like, man, this is, this is really cool. So, <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was great chatting with you. Yeah. Good time with you. Thank right, you so have much. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Hey guys, before you go, if you like what I'm getting to do here, having these amazing uh, conversations with amazing people, the number one way that you can help support uh, the art of show is by leaving a rating interview on iTunes. And if you go to Brandon Cullum, C-U-L-L-U-M-M like man dot com forward slash review, they'll take you right to iTunes and I'll let you leave it there. Uh, That helps support what I'm doing as well as let other folks know about it. And uh, I would greatly appreciate it. So until next time, I'll talk to you soon.